this generation, the current generation of the band, has some information about the history. Last week, you learned who the founder of the band was, Vernon Brown, and that he was a World War II man, and that he founded the band in about 1991. Well, that's a chapter. Now, not necessarily in succession, but this next chapter is a most amazing chapter. And the history of the band would be totally incomplete without this chapter that starts with Countess Felder. Yay! There is Countess. And Countess graced this band for many, many years as our lead vocal, but she represented more than the vocals and she represented more than her professional musical career, which it was professional and, and, and amazing. She represented what we call the heart of the music. If you could feel what she sang, then you were uh, the majority of the audience. You could feel it, you could sense it, she delivered it, and it, it, it came across so well uh, that the band grew from her strength. Um, we have some stories to tell about her because uh, her daughter, Charlene, who was, who was in the band as well, is gonna talk uh, about Countess and her life growing up down south. But um, I wanted uh, to let you know that all three of them, Countess, Charlene, her daughter, and Charlene's son, Styles, drove <laughs> for eight or 10 years, I don't know. 10 from Stockton, California, to the rehearsal at Rossmore and then back. So they drove like 150 miles round trip just to come to band practice. So I'd like to introduce, first of all, uh, can you guys all see Charlene's screen over here? Wave Charlene. Hi. Hi. There you go, your screen lights up Hi. when you talk. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's Charlene, white on the right, <laughs> and Styles, uh, white oh. on the left, and uh, mm -hmm. mother and, oh. And, and son, uh, and they go back to the beginning, as I said. Um, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stalling just a little here, but um, what, what I want you to do is I want you to listen to Countess on a couple songs right now. You saw a picture. If we can keep the picture up while she sings, it would, do, it, it would be great. We don't have a video of Countess. Looking for one. Can do. Got it. Pardon the brief break. <laughs> well, if we take that break, uh, if, you'll, if you'll get it ready, Charlene, can yes. you tell a story? Can you tell a story about your mom in, I believe it's Selma, walking on the other side of the street of the theater? Can you take that? that, well, that? Absolutely, Mo. First of all, I want to say hello and thank you for um, allowing us this time, myself and Styles. As Mo said, I'm Countess's, one of her daughters. I'm Charlene. My son to the right is Styles. Absolutely, um, just for some uh, info on Countess, Countess was born on January 30th, 1941 in Birmingham, Alabama. Countess, so think about this, during the 50s, she was a teenager. So when she was around 14 or 15, she worked at the Alabama Theater in Birmingham, Alabama. So when I say she worked, she cleaned, you know, she swept, she mopped, she did things like that. On this, in this beautiful theater, Countess was uh, not allowed to go on the theater or really go near, you know, except for to clean. But she always, you know, would get a glance of the white performers there. And she vowed from that time that she would one day perform at that theater. And just her courage and uh, ambition and compassion and fearlessness allowed her to do that many, many years later. Uh, Countess, Let's see, she joined the Rossmore Big Band family around 1999 when she and Styles did their first performance at the Town Hall Theater in Lafayette, which along with Earl Cunha, which was fantastic. However, she just began to appreciate, you know, her time there. And um, I'm gonna make it, you know, pretty quick. Um, musically, she was thrilled to participate in the band's repertoire. And she was always happy to be surrounded by just these amazing, amazingly talented musicians. She has such a great appreciation for Frank Como's experience and expertise and for Mo's magic in leading the group. Um, I do wanna say personally, uh, the band was love and family for Countess. 
In addition, she felt so blessed by the band as it was also the perfect opportunity for our family to nurture Styles' musical talent. Uh, and one of her biggest dreams, as I said earlier, was for her to perform at the Alabama Theater. Not only did she perform there, she did a tribute to Ella Fitzgerald, and that's where she was inducted into the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame in 1995. Oh, oh. yeah, I got a tear. Yeah, thank and you. One of the, and, Mo, and just quickly, let me just insert this. One of the you know, things I want you to understand is during her teenage years, remember, she was born in 41. So during the 50s, like I said, she was a teenager and the racial tensions were high. So she, I remember you know, her telling us how she couldn't believe that she could be in such a place and not you know, be able to be on that place you know, to perform yes. in that moment at that time because she had the talent then. She's been singing since she was probably eight or nine. But anyway, that, that's just a special thing that she's always shared with us. And I'll, I'll let Styles. You want to do the, you want to do the music first, or? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're gonna. That was perfect. Thank you. By the way, I have a tear because I've heard that story, but to hear it again years later yes. is really touching, and and, yeah, and uh, speaks the world of Countess and your family. Let's, let's yeah. hear. Yeah. So now we're gonna listen to Countess. Here we go. Okay. I never cared much for moonlit skies. I never winked back at fireflies. But now that the stars are in your eyes and beginning to see the light, I never went in for afterglow or candlelight on the mistletoe. Now when you turn the lamp down low, the light used to ramble through the park, stand out of box in the dark. Then you came and caused a spark that's a fire on fire now. I never made love by laughing sharply. I never saw rainbows in my wine. But now that your lips are burning. Yes, Charlie. Hey, yeah, it's Charlie. I just wanted to comment that, you know, I was not lucky enough to join the band while she was still with them. But listening again to her tonight, what I love about her, and it's a tribute to, I think, professional singers, but when you listen to that, try and beat your foot on the floor. And there's not very many notes at all that she ever sings on the downbeat. Yeah. So it's just a little bit <laughs> Thank ahead, you for that. a little bit behind. You go. That's what Sorry. singing is. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. I may have to make a comment right there, though. That's the good news. The bad news is if the band doesn't know where one is, it's a real train wreck. 
That's the problem. Countess is going to the right, and we're going far to the left. Yeah, and she she was seven. leading from the front, wasn't yeah. she? <laughs> but that's true. That's uh, no, true. but yeah, background music is fine. Yeah. yeah. But no, the, the whole band isn't supposed to do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Erlen. Yeah. Um, and I was in the band. Yay! Hi, Erlen. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I remember it well, and uh, it was an important part of our of our concerts every time, and rehearsal for that matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is Jamie. I I was in the band at, at some of those years when Countess would come, and I'll just make a personal comment about her. She was so gracious all the time. She had a smile that would just melt you, no matter what you were thinking or feeling. She was gracious and welcoming and had a hug for everybody. She was a lovely, lovely woman. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I can relate something personal. I was going through some personal, uh, I guess, tribulations in life. People go through that, but I never said anything. And I would sit down while Frank was directing, you know, sit down in the chair next to Countess and she'd grab my hand. I never said anything to her and she goes, Mo, you know how she would talk, Mo, <laughs> Mo. it's all going to be all right. And that's she knew. She could smell a problem. She was as smart. She was amazing. She had all kinds of aptitudes that you would never think of. But she was a great friend of the band and also intuitive. And uh, I like uh, that you observed that she took the freedoms when she sang with the band. She knew the band well enough. She didn't trip us. She knew when to skip and she yes. did it just, it was, it was comfortable for everybody. Yes. yes. So um, uh, Maxfield, should I move on at this point as far as uh, the next portion? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So um, we're going to hear more about Countess in future history stories, but it's time to go to Countess's daughter, Charlene White, you're looking at her right now. She joined the band about the same time, I believe. Uh, and uh, that put, like I said, three generations in the same room, Countess, Charlene, and Styles. And so here's Charlene White. And uh, let's see, we have a video, I believe. Oh, boy. This is really old. Thank you, Mo and Maxfield. You know, 
that brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. Um, yes. And, you know, let me just say how much, I mean, really, you know, how much this van just meant to us, you know, just on a personal note to me, you know, and I can speak for Styles and our family. Um, what's, what's so special about this van is the fact that it was, it is generations in jazz. That's very important to remember. Generations in jazz, because for us to have these experiences, and as we get, you know, a little older and wiser, to see the younger generations, you know, to, for us to be able to share and to see them thrive and to see what they become, that's one of the most meaningful, I think, um, purposes of this band. And, you know, we just have to thank you so much, Mo. Thank you for what you, you give so freely. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to cry, but you, you, you share so much. And just thank, thank you and love to you always. You too, Charlene. I appreciate those comments and it means a lot. And you can all feel that Countess uh, is looking down on all of us. And so is Frank tonight. Frank. Yep, the two of them are looking over all of us and they would say indeed the younger people, the seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th graders, they are our future. And we get to look at them and we get to hope and pray Absolutely. and wish that their experiences are all positive going forward. But yes. one thing's for sure, tonight they get to see examples of people who were student associates or alumni of the band and that the band is important to their lives still. And that's the mentoring and the example that I was hoping uh, we can pass on to the next generation. And uh, Charlene, thank you so much. Uh, and it's always wonderful. We have to have you back to sing again because Styles got to come back too. Okay. For a guest performance, yes, sir. Yeah, now let's, not forget, let's not forget Styles on West Coast Blues last Wait year. Wait a second, Jamie. <laughs> don't don't jam the don't jam the ballot box already. You know, you have to do that, Jamie, every time. No, you're right. So we'll be catching up with you, Jamie, in just a second. So it's now time for me to introduce Styles White, who on the left Yay! was was with Earl Cunha on the opening show of the Generations in Jazz, I think the 2001 uh, uh, Jazz uh, uh, GIJ uh, Festival, opening night of the Generations in Jazz Festival with Earl Cunha coming out in a bow tie and a tuxedo in <laughs> Chicago with Earl Cunha. And the two of them were our vocalists. Now, <clears throat> just so you know, Earl Cunha was a great singer and had to make a decision whether he would sing professionally or go to college at Cal. And uh, some people said, you better go to college. He and Styles made up a team and they did a great job together. Take a look at the picture on the right. That is Styles too. That's his amazing personality. And down below, I get to uh, boast just a little. That was a special night that I was privy to. It was the night that uh, I was awarded a real special uh, honor of a Jefferson Award uh, for the Rossmore Big Band Project in Yay. years or so. And they asked for a few people to come speak. And it was, um, uh, they chose, uh, St I chose Styles White and Frank Como and Aaron Grant. And Styles blew me away with the words that he had to say about what the band meant to him and how it's helped him. And so I just wanted to introduce to you Styles White. And now we have something to share with you. Go ahead. West Coast Blues. One, two, three, two, two, three.
Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just that, that, on that was just fabulous. This has been a real joy to to hear Styles and to see Styles and Charlene, and by you know by far to hear Countess once again. It was beautiful. I really Great. love you guys. Thanks for coming down. Yeah. Thank we you. you we love you too. Yeah. Yeah. And we miss you. Yeah. Miss you. Yeah. So so this chapter of Countess and her family is not over because we try to feature Styles and Charlene when we can, when it's appropriate for the right show, but we keep you coming back and we haven't lost any feeling at all. In fact, as you said, Charlene, as we get a little older, it means even more to be connected together using, when you think about it, music is a medium to get to know each other. Yes. And yeah. And I'm going to describe something that I think is magic and I explain it to other people, but I've never really explained it to the band the way I'm about to say it. Okay. So a 12 year old and an 82 year old are introduced to each other in the Rossmore band. They sit down in the trumpet section for the first time. I remember Billy Buss looking at, at Bob Sutherland. These are 12 year old and, a, and at that time, 88 year old. And what I said was they didn't talk the first week. All they did was look at each other and stare at the music, right? But the next week they actually glanced at each other and the young one, the 12 year old made a quick mistake on an eighth note. And the older person said, did you realize that's an eighth, not a quarter? So the first words were finally mentioned between the two of them. And then three weeks later, the young person would actually look up and say hi. And after two months, they were talking. And after two years, one became the mentor of the other. And it wasn't by age. It was because they became friends and they mentored each other. You see, intergenerational exchanges through generations in jazz through the Rossmore Band is something that is magic. It is the magic of the band. And so, what I say, some people don't have a voice. They're very shy. Young students come and they just can't talk. But what they learn and what we learn is their voice is their trumpet or their saxophone. And eventually they're gonna say, how are you? To the person that's next to them because their voice is now recognized. And so their instruments are their voice when they're shy or they're young or they're not sure or they're insecure. And the mentors in the band, the senior members, get to help, um, if you will, them find the next chapter. And hopefully music continues to be that medium that, that propels, helps propel people to the next chapter. I hope I said that the right way. I hope you could enjoy what I was trying to convey to all of you, the magic of the generations. Yes. And so speaking of generations, um, we, yeah, thanks, Greg, I saw that. Um, uh, I wanna invite you guys back and I'm sure you will come back and, yes. um, and we have to stay in touch. And now it's time, you all remember uh, Michael Henning from, yeah. from yeah, exactly, our wonderful drummer. And, um, and so this is the first of, you know, remember we're, we're doing these <clears throat> director's notes is the program. And it seemed to me, the next move was to create a chapter every week on uh, student alumni, student associates who'd been with the band like Michael, and he's the first that's going to give us a report of what was it like, how did it help you, where did it get you, and has it helped you get to where you're at, and everything in between. So, Michael, you got about ten minutes, and and uh -oh. I know you can, I know I know you. You can. You're, take you're giving a drummer ten minutes to open microphone. Mode? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Henning, this is the big band of Rossmore. Welcome home. Take it away. Thanks, Mo. Is there anything specific you want um, me to start with? Or should I start from, from the beginning? And yeah, how did you get to the band? Who recruited you? What did you learn? So I was trying to I was trying to think about this earlier. It's so funny because I actually went through the old Facebook archives for pictures and I think I joined around 2010 or 2011, which was my junior or senior year in high school. And where did and you go to school? So I grew up in San Ramon. I went to California high school. Um, 
really, it was a solid music program, but I think at the time I had just, I had just gotten into the Contra Costa County honor band. And I think that that was kind of my, one of my first introductions, I think to generations in jazz and the whole family. And I think from there it was either, I think we met maybe at Lafayette jazz camp. Yeah. Lafayette summer music workshop, summer music workshop. And you told me about this thing that happens on Wednesday nights, you know, well, we don't have any drummer spots open. So, you know, I'll keep you in mind. Michael, Michael, (laughs) Michael, Michael. if I had a spot, would you be interested? Yeah. Michael, weren't weren't you and Connor in that band together? The Contra Costa band? Yeah. Yeah. So Connor and I were, yeah, I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Other band Um, alumni. Yeah. And then I think I think Mo, you called me or emailed me one day with your famous uh, your your favorite numbers nine one one. Oh yeah. Um, and you're like, hey, we need we need someone to come by, and that that night was the start of something that has been my part of my foundation and stepping stones going forward. Um, I think I was in the band for one or three years on a one to three years on a regular basis. And I still consider myself part of the band. Um, Cause you are. <laughs> and it's just, it, it's one of those things as I've gone on, I went through college. I went to San Jose state. I actually, I, I got my business degree, but during that whole time I was playing and studying on my own. Um, music. S- mu- studying yes. music and, and doing all that on the side. And now I'm at a point where I'm playing professionally. Well, not right now, but um, it it's it's one of those things. It's every time I look back, as you know, all these I have my individual drum teachers, and then there's there's the bigger picture and the family that brings it all together. And I think the first sense I got outside of a school setting was in the Rossmore band. Um, and, you know, it's not only music that we learned. If, you, if you're a part of the band and you don't learn how to shake someone's hand correctly, you, you probably didn't attend practice. <laughs> um, so it's not, it's, not only, it's not only the musical aspect of things that you get. It's, it's, you know, like you touched on earlier, it's the building of relationships. And I think it's the one common bond that brings us all together is the music side of things. Absolutely. Like perfect example, what I saw Styles and Charlene, I saw you guys for the first time in probably four or five years at, <laughs> what was it, two years ago? Yes. And yes. we probably hadn't talked at all, but <laughs> the cool part about music is it was like time hadn't passed because, right. hey, do you remember this time in the band where we went through this? And, or do you remember this show? And it's like, oh my goodness, I totally do. And so it's, it's one of those things, I think in the moment, we all tend to take it for granted. Right. And, it's, and it's been, especially with everything going on right now, we have more time away from the normal hustle and, and grind that we're all normally on to like take time to sit back and really think about it. And I was, I actually, I was talking to one of my musician friends today and he, he wasn't in the band, but he, he knows because I've talked about it and just how this has been so impactful for me. And this was one of those moments where it was like, holy smokes, I got to work with Frank Como. Like, as I think when you're, when you're younger and coming up and you're, you're getting all this stuff thrown at you, it's, it's hard to take it in at the moment that we come back to these moments in our life that we didn't realize how they were impacting us at a certain moment. And so, and it was today where I was just sitting, thinking about, you know, what am I going to talk about tonight? Um, I don't want to say jokes because that would just (laughs) fail, but yours, yours, yours don't work anyway. So keep going. Yeah, I know (laughs) it's, it's great. That's why I didn't want to do it, but it was, it was just the time of, it was realizing, Holy smokes. I was getting to play music written by one of the greatest arrangers of maybe all time who also was one of the most humble guys of all time that you know if you didn't 
if I wasn't in Rossmore big band, I probably would have never heard of Frank just cause that's, that's who he was. He, he embodied the music, I think through his, just when he was up there in front of the band, it didn't matter, you know, how old he was or what he was going through. That was, that was his life. It was, you know, getting to see that it was, it, it brought different elements of him out as a human being. And I, I was also thinking of another time where I think Mo, you and I went and visited him and just hung out with him for a couple hours, listening to music. It's like moments like that. Another thing, it's just, you know, we get caught up in things and don't get to realize what exactly we're getting to do with certain people in certain moments. And I think for a lot of you younger kids on the call, while you didn't get a chance to maybe work with Frank directly, you're keeping his legacy alive. And that's just as important because I think a lot of this music, if, if we aren't doing what we have to, to keep this going from not only the generations past and current, it's not going to make it into the future ones. And so it, it's, it's up to us and everyone that has the ability to play this music to really keep it going. Great, Michael. Yes. Yeah, very, very well said. Thank you very much. Um, of course. Yeah. So um, you're on the sub list still, I want you to know. You know, because if you get an 811 call, you got to pack the drums up and get over real quick. So just I changed my number, Mo. No, no, no. You're on my speed dial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Michael. Your words of are really helpful and hopefully set some type of a, a image. That's it for some young people. And I'd like uh, I'd like to think that any one of our young people could reach out if they ever had a question about what's it like to go to a dorm for the first time and they don't want to ask somebody, they could ask you now, you know, you, anything, yeah. you know, be a mentor, Sit, stand up and be a mentor. Finally, could you do something Michael? Okay. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm an open book. Anyone that has questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer at, you know, you can't where to get to where you're going if you don't remember where you came from. And it's powerful. This was one of those things. I think Mo, when we, we had lost touch for about a year and I told you, I was like, you said, Hey, do you want to come back? I said, this is family. Of course yeah. <laughs> it's I'll be there. Yeah. It's no ifs, ands or buts. Just tell yeah. me when. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's just, it's, it's one of those things. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of what everyone does here. Um, so if anyone wants to reach out or has questions, you know, open line. Yeah. So um, along those lines, Michael, um, just before we close for the night, I got a couple housekeeping things to, in, uh, to, to handle. Um, but uh, there is a project that uh, I put in place this week. Alexander Hussein, our graduating tenor sax player, has agreed to take the 14 rosters over the years that I have, old rosters of people's names, emails, phone numbers, cell numbers, and compile them all together so we have the history files and how to reach out to people so that we could basically bring some people together into these Zoom meetings as alumni and or get together at some further point. But that's a summer project for Alexander. I wanted you to know about it. And now awesome. I just need your help looking at next week's schedule. Greg will be gone. Maxfield, can you step in for just a second? You, Maxfield, there was a substitute yep. idea you had while Greg was gone. Do you remember what it was? I have no recollection whatsoever. Okay, then we'll leave it alone. <laughs> next week, we have, I believe it's Josh and Catherine is next week. Could you confirm, no, Cynthia? Uh, no, Mo. We've got oh. Lillian and William were going to go tonight, but I'm oh. guessing they're gonna, you're going to move them to next week if that's no. possible. Ah, whoa. Because Josh and Catherine are coming up in August. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't mind. Uh, let me let me just see. Hold on a second. Let me make a decision because I, 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 I'm let me just look at something. No, I would like Lillian um, and William to take it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So I would like to uh, introduce Lillian and William. Uh, Lillian has been with the band, I'm going to guess, three or four years, maybe longer. I can't. She'll tell us. And William, a couple years. 
and we see them on Wednesday nights, typically. And so this is a mother son relationship. We call it intergenerational, yes. just like Styles and Charlene were. And there are many other examples of this. So Absolutely. Lillian and William, you can take it away. You got the stage. Yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just start and then William can join in later, uh, if that's okay. Uh, and I was kind of inspired by what Charlie said and everybody else kind of going back to the beginning. And, uh, you know, I started playing the violin and I did a lot of classical stuff and um, never realized I was going to play in a jazz band. But um, I, I, I played in, in elementary school and I um, went on to play in orchestra in o, at OIS. I don't know if you guys know that school, but um, OIS and Miramani played in orchestra for, did a lot of classical stuff. Um, the only time I'd actually done a lot of handwritten stuff was in high school um, in the musicals. You know, that was fun. Um, and I played in a uh, Diablo Youth Symphony. Um, and then I didn't play for a while in college and went back to it. I actually played in a community orchestra symphony in Washington State for a few years when I lived there. But it was all classical and so I took a had kids you know got busy and I didn't really think about it um and then my daughter actually who many of you um probably remember in the trombone section um oh, she, I remember <laughs> <laughs> she just you know suddenly wanted to join Rossmore Big Band in 2012 but I I didn't join I, I just would watch her and enjoy the music. And, you know, I saw the violins there and I was really intimidated because um, I, I, I knew that, you know, it was all classical for me and I, I, I wasn't sure about that. Um, but uh, Bob Richardson, uh, he reached out to me and he's like, uh, you know, you should, you know, try and play. So I, I tried one time and then I, I came in and, and I sat in and eventually I joined in 2013 just like seven years ago. It's crazy. Um, I had to go back to see when I joined because I forgot. <laughs> um, so I've had a really great time. I had to learn a lot of stuff. Like uh, everything's like a lot looser, even though Frank Como made all this effort to write parts for the violin. It's like, well, there's no bowings. The slurs are not marked. The time signature doesn't matter. Um, there's swing and that's hard on the violin. Um, so <laughs> to learn a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm still learning. Um, and, you know, William, she graduated in 2016. And, and, you know, about a year later, William, who I had no idea wanted to join Rossmore Big Man, he, he suddenly jumped in and he just said, hey, um, I want to join. So it was like a whole year went by. So um, he came on board 2017. And um, I believe you were a freshman, right, Will? You got to unmute yourself yeah, if you want to um, talk. Yeah. Yeah, that, was... that was a good time. Um, so it's really fun to see William in a setting with his peers and like watching him play and um, just just learning and, you know, getting better all the time. Um, and I, it's really fun when I'm playing and I'm not playing and there's the sax part, you know, like I have, you know, the, the prime seating to watch that. Um, and of course, you know, whenever the trombones are playing, I'm like really excited because I remember Sophie doing that. Um, and it's really fun to see all the students develop across these years and like, you know, from eighth grade to 11th grade and all the different grades and Anyway, I have a couple of pictures I wanted to share. Um, can I share my screen, Max? Is that okay? Absolutely, absolutely. And if it requests, I will. I will accept whatever. Can undisable me. I will. Let's see here. Here we go. Okay. Um, Let me. Yeah. I here we go. We want to put, I don't want to put you in a waiting room. I don't want to rename you. 
I'm going to make you a co-host. Which yeah, will that's it. Give you. There we go. <laughs> Boom. All right. Um, wait. Uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so here's here's one. Can you see this? Yes. This is one view you can't get unless you're both in the band. <laughs> This is me in the violin section watching him and all the wonderful saxes during a warm up. Um, and this is Sophie. You know, none of you guys were around, but um, Sophie came back to play with the band. You guys missed it. So we're going to have to oh. do this again. That's Sophie, trombone section. Um, and you get twin pictures the different years. That, that's another benefit of having, uh, being a mom uh, in the band, you know. So um, that's it. Uh, William, you got some stuff to add? There we go. All right. Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's nice because. Um, there's no trouble like getting to band at all. Like, well, I'm I'm being driven anyway. So, and then I I've been trouble hearing you. Oh, all right. All right. Is this a bit better? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's nice to have a family member in the band because uh, if the, the transportation is quite easy. Um, it's also nice because. I, I tend to be uh, have trouble remembering schedules correctly, so it's it's quite helpful to just have someone in my house who can always have the schedule. And William, what can you tell us something about what you learned so far in the band? Oh yeah, it's certainly um, interesting. To me to uh, to play music in a non-academic setting i usually uh have just played it in school before i joined so that was like a different sort of idea for me it made me think differently about music and how, how i could play music Uh, William, what grade are you in now? I, I'm going to be a, a senior. Uh, so ho hopefully we can get back to playing before you're gone. Yeah. 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 So William, how long have you been with the band? I think I've been with the band at least all of high school. I think that's that's about how long I've been with the band. And what school do you go to? I go to Campo. Uh, you're over at Campo. Are, are you are you are you in the jazz band at Campo? No. Okay. Uh, are you in the any of the bands there? Yeah, I'm in the uh, symphonic band, which is got just it. the normal band. Yeah, got it. Well, <clears throat> before we we uh, we close, I was going to ask each of you a question, um, and the question would be, what's your takeaway? From the Rossmore band, what do you take away? What what you know? What's the takeaway? Um, I, I can answer for for me. Um, one of the things I've learned playing in Rossmore big band is that you know I was kind of wondered you know how do people learn jazz you know and you watch uh, different groups and stuff but just being in the big band I realized it just it's it's in you know it's it's uh, the people who play and the musicians and you have to pass it on from person to person it's not really written down you know like you you got to listen and you got it's people who are playing it so it, it's passed from generation yeah. to generation yeah. very good that william what's your takeaway i think um i didn't realize this really entirely before i i played in the band but actually like uh, being in a band and, and practicing and then going to a concert and everything can actually be a lot of fun. I I mean, I had fun with it before, I think, but, you know, I don't think I really got that. I thought I was sort of skeptical about how fun it actually was until I uh, joined the band. Yeah. 
Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Remember, Greg always says it's a party on the stage. So yeah, yeah. thumbs up, Greg. Well, thank you, uh, Lillian and William, uh, for sharing that with us uh, intergenerationally. Now, um, and, and Cynthia, who is on next week? Uh, we need to get a couple of people to volunteer to be on for It's Not Jazz. Yeah. We have so, no intergenerational couple on next week. Yeah, so that's the two things we need to we, we need to recruit. Let me do it in the next minute before we say goodnight. So we need to fill two slots. We need a mother, son, daughter, anyway, intergenerational. And um, it's not Josh and it's not Catherine because they're the, the next week. Is that correct? They're August uh, something. Oh, in August. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anyone online with us right now that is a son or a daughter of someone older in the band? Do we have Here's an another alternative if no one. Uh, Go ahead. Available. What about Michael and his sister? Oh. Michael and his sister, both in the band together. Oh, Michael and Christina. Yeah, that's, a great idea. that's a great idea. That's a great, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. So, Michael, report for duty with Christina next Wednesday night. I I can I think I can make that happen. There well, you I, tell, I, I think she's on the call right now, actually. You, I, I think of her Christina and Mike the link Mike for, uh, yeah. tonight. So yeah, I you think tell we can her, definitely make that happen. You tell her Uncle Mo says pay attention. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can text her too. I know I know how to get a hold of her. <laughs> well, um, well, well. <laughs> Anyway, that'll and, be great. And Mo, Mo, real quick, I, I didn't know we were moving on earlier, and I think I speak for everybody when I say this, but thank you for all of your hard work that you put into this band. Without you, it does not happen. Um, and so Absolutely. I I was appreciative back then. I'm even more appreciative now. And, you know, keep doing what you do because Thanks, Michael. it's yeah, a very Michael. special thing. Yeah. So Thanks. Thanks. We appreciate you. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot. Music can do a lot to bring us all together yes. and learn about Amen. each other. Find out how to help each other, too. So exactly. we just solved that one. Um, history next week. Um, I'm going to take the history project next week. Um, and it's going to be called Under the Wing and On the Water. And it's going to be the history of the band Sailing on the Jeremiah O'Brien and also supporting the Collins <clears throat> Foundation, B-17 oh, wow. and the B-24s. By the way, when you saw uh, that picture uh, of um, uh, Lillian's daughter and, and uh, taken, uh, getting off the steps of the, of the B-17, um, wow. that is 909. That plane is the one that went down this year and it no longer exists. And that's too bad. Uh, but I wanted to uh, let you know that the Collings Foundation is still flying their planes. And we would have been there last week or so, or a week ago, two weeks ago, but COVID put them and grounded them. So um, we need someone next week to step up with something that we call, and Greg did the first one, it's not jazz, it's, it's called It's Not Jazz. So what is your favorite song that you think hey, you well, would share with us? Yeah. Hey, Mo, Charlie here. Yeah. I've got a couple of songs that might work. I, maybe I can run them past you and we'll see. Okay, I'll put you down. And but, if not, uh, then I'm going to give you, yeah. Well, one, is a, one is an amazing recording of Aquarius. Yeah. Um, the second is a uh, Broadway show tune taken out of character. And the third is a wonderful trumpet solo. And okay, uh, we'll do that. That's committee work. You, you and, and I. You and that. I will. Let's let's talk about it. Or, or yeah, let call. you listen to them. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. So we're gonna we're gonna call it off now because we're way over by ten minutes. We try to hold it to an hour, hour and ten. Before we sign off for the night, I want to well, first. Mo, yeah, Mo, if I can, I just I love Michael Henning talking about you know how great it was to get with Frank. And I had a pretty special session with him. I used to try and take him to lunch once in a while. But when he brought to us the CD of his King David Suite, 
um, and it was a recording of it being played by a group up in Canada. Winnipeg Symphony. Yeah, and it was there was a guest conductor that night. Stanley yes, Black. Stanley Black. And uh, I've known Stanley Black, not personally, but through his music since I was probably 13 years old. And uh, always loved listening to him. Anyway, I mentioned to Frank that I had these old LPs of Stanley Black playing piano. And to my amazement, Frank had never known that Stanley Black was a pianist. Um, and uh, I took, you know, some recordings over to Frank and we sat down one afternoon and he just listened and it was so special to be in his, in his room. He had his eyes closed and he would just have these smiles as he listened to the, to the music. And Stanley Black was an incredible pianist. Um, anybody who wants to listen to him, just Google Stanley Black Latin rhythms because he played with like three other guys and it's amazing music. Anyway, it was a very special time with yeah. Frank Como. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Charlie, get with me this week. We'll, we can listen to some songs. You can lead me to them and we'll find one that works. And thanks for your recollection of the times and the lunches that we all had with uh, Frank, you and I sometimes. And um, Frank uh, lives on through all of us and his music. It's great to hear that Styles and Charlene They'll feel close to all of us with the music. And yes. Michael, thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, I want to thank Greg for a wonderful music lesson. Yes, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Now we get to uh, Maxfield. Give him a big hand. Thank you, Maxfield. <laughs> Cynthia, who keeps us all together. And then if that's not enough, Erlen, who you know, make sure that we're one. And I always want to thank you guys. And so from director's notes for the big band of Rossmore, I want to say to every one of you, good night. And we'll see you back next week, except for Greg. Greg, you should take the night off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. See you guys. <laughs>